In this video, we're gonna use Luminar 4 to raw process and enhance this image going from this before shot to this final family portrait. What's up my friends, my name is Pi. I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersey Photography as well as SLR Lounge. Now we're teaming up with Skylum to bring you a new set of Luminar tutorials. In this video, we're talking specifically about using Luminar for its raw processing capabilities as well as its image enhancement capabilities. So we often think of all the awesome AI enhancement tools that we get with Luminar, we don't realize just how powerful it is for raw processing as well. So I'd love for y'all to pause the video now, go ahead and jump into the description and download the exercise file. Once you guys have it, let's get back to the video. So load this exercise file up. This is a shot of my own wacky kids. We're actually at Joshua Tree. Uh, when it opened up, we took them out there just to kind of get out of quarantine a little bit. It, we, we did have, it's open, it's open. You can go there and visit and keep your social distances. And uh, my kids love to goof around. So in this shot, I'm actually having them race up the hill. And Ellie, my little girl, always has to beat the boys. So this is the wild look on her face as she's beating the boys up the hill. You'll notice that this image was a, this is a raw file captured from a Fuji X-T4. In the histogram, you'll see the highlights and the shadows, well, it's pushed. So what I'm trying to do with each of our shots is capture as much dynamic range as possible. So if I want to, I can recover my highlights, but I also haven't taken the shadows so low that I start to get muddy shadow detail. So we're maximizing the dynamic range in our shots. Now what I'm gonna do is, because I'm working on Luminar, I'm not gonna worry about the sky because I'm gonna replace the sky uh, afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the exposure up to about two. You'll notice that because I have all the detail in my raw file, it holds together very well even when I pull the exposure up by two stops. Okay, so I haven't underexposed so much that we're killing image quality. Now I'm gonna go to the highlights and I'm gonna pull highlights a bit. Now I'm not so much thinking about the sky, I'm more so thinking about just the mountains in the background, as well as a little bit of the highlights kind of on the rocks and everything else. Okay, I'm not too worried about this area because we're going to replace that. I'm going to now bring the shadows up just a bit. So we're going to go up to about 40. And if you want, you can add a little bit of smart contrast, I might put a little bit of contrast into this. And then from here, this is where I usually like to get the image before I'll adjust white balance. Now a, a great idea is to grab the eyedropper and just place it over something that is somewhat neutral and it's going to make its own automated adjustment. You can see if you like it, as long as it's somewhat neutral, it's going to get very close. And it did. It did a great job here. Um, so as long as with the clothing or whatever you're picking isn't inherently colored, you're good to go. Okay. So you can see on Ethan's shirt, I'm getting a little bit, these are the identical shirts, but depending on where I click, I get a slightly different uh, white balance reading. So I kind of like it a little bit on the warmer side. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the tint right there, but I'm gonna bring the temperature up a little, like about to here. Okay, this is starting to look pretty good. Now I can have control over my white point if I want to kind of make an adjustment there, but I kind of like my white point where it's at. I am gonna raise the blacks just a bit more. I could also manipulate a tone curve if I want to. So if I wanna use the tone curve to kind of pull the exposure a little bit, and let's just say I'm gonna pull the exposure, but I'm also going to add in a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna do a subtle S curve right here, okay? So this is starting to look really, really nice. And what I'm gonna do now is go down to my color adjustments. And if you want, you can use your AI enhancement adjustments to kind of add a little bit more. Uh, the, the AI accent kind of tool is almost like a, a smart sort of clarity, like a smart mid-tone contrast that we're getting out of it. And same thing with the structure right here. Structure more is more so like clarity than uh, the AI Enhance. But I like using a little bit of these tools because they offer this unique look to an image that I've only found inside of, of Luminar. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the AI Accent piece as well, the AI Enhance. Okay, I don't again need to do any sky enhancement because, well, that we're gonna save for a sky swap, right? So now in the HSL, I'm gonna start with my reds and what I'm gonna do is first swing the hue over to the left side and then over the right side. Now over the left, we're getting more reds. Over the right, we're getting slightly more greens. I wanna actually bias it a little bit towards the green side. And I'm gonna pull a bit of the saturation out of the reds as well. I'm gonna go to the oranges and this time I'm gonna pull this a little bit towards the red side. And I'm gonna also pull a little bit of the saturation out, okay? 
Now if you want, I can also add a little bit of luminance to these tones just to kind of brighten up faces a little bit. I like doing that a lot. Um, I'll keep it very subtle because if there's other areas of orange in the image like the, the rock, it's going to brighten those as well. But I like the look that it has in kind of lifting out skin just a bit. Here under the yellows, we're going to pull saturation just down a little bit as well. And what I'm doing is kind of creating a slightly more flat and soft look to the colors in the image. I'm actually going to pull the green tones back quite a bit as well. So I want to keep those greens a little more of a subtle sort of pastel vibe to them. I'm even going to shift them quite a bit towards the teal, uh, towards the, the greens, or the, the left side of the greens a little bit more. Okay. In our aqua channel, it looks pretty good here. I am going to pull a little bit of saturation down. I'm going to do the same thing for the blues, kind of keeping these rocks a little bit more cleaned up and even adding a little bit more greens back into those blues as well. So what I'm doing is sort of creating a uniform set of color to the image. And I like where it's at right here. Like we're getting to a really great look. I'm going to zoom in and just make sure. <laughs> look at Ellie's wacky face. It's hilarious. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the denoise a little bit to add in a little bit of uh, luminosity denoise. And we can kind of go ahead and zoom in and just take a look at where it's at right now. So I love the denoise that this offers because it's so, it's subtle, yet it keeps, uh, it does a great job of denoising while keeping detail. It's much more powerful than simply, uh, like let's say Lightroom's uh, uh, denoising function. So now from here, I'm gonna do a little bit of detail enhancements. So I'm gonna go up here. We're gonna just increase the small detail and medium detail enhancements just a little bit, okay? And then I'm gonna also add a tiny bit of sharpening into this. So I'm kind of doing a balance between uh, denoising as well as a little bit of sharpening. Now this is already looking really, really nice right now. In fact, if I actually go look at the before and after, look at this image. And you might be going, well, yeah, but we've lost all the sky, but look, the sky wasn't anything crazy to kind of begin with, right? So what I'm doing is I'm processing the image for skin tones, and then I'm gonna go into, uh, and, and by the way, this is one of those times where if you like this look, this is where I would save it out, right? Save this as a new look, and I might call this my pastel kind of vibe, right? So I might say this as soft, pastel, bright skin. I usually like to give my, my presets kind of a specific name. So now, I can click that on any image that I pull in and it's going to automatically process and apply those same settings. So now what I'm going to do is jump over into the creative panel and this is where we're going to go to sky replacement. So now we're using AI sky replacement and I'm going to choose a sky that would fit for this scene. So I don't think because this is a sunset type image, a blue sky isn't necessarily going to fit into the shot, right? What I need to do is choose kind of like something that's on the, the kind of sunset type look. So I like number one. Number two, the sun is not quite in the right position. What I'm looking for is a good baseline starting point. Uh, and if I did this one, I'm gonna flip the sky and see if the, the sun is in the right place. It's close, it's close to, yeah, it's close. It's not my favorite though, let's keep going. I like this one a lot, okay. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for an image that sort of matches the same tone and vibe and light direction. Light direction is very important. And I think my favorite one is still this one where I have this kind of natural bright highlight point right where the sun would be in the shot. So I like that. And choosing the right sky is gonna be critical. The next steps to getting a convincing effect is gonna be the actual adjustments that we make. And look at how beautiful Luminar does in just knowing where the sky should go and automatically masking and doing everything. So now what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna set the, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you a different trick with the uh, mask. So let's not worry about that right now. Let's go to our close gaps and I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit just to make sure that we get a nice smooth line along the edges. The other thing I like to do, and sometimes I'll do this first, is I'll go to atmospheric haze. One of the biggest reasons your skies don't look natural, even after you match the light direction, is because the brightness of that sky doesn't match the image. So what I need to do is get to, you know, if, if the sky was to be this dark and our subjects were in this much shadow, you'd have to be adding flash. So there's something about this that's off right now. And what it is, is bringing and toning down that sky. So I'm gonna bring the atmospheric haze all the way up. And immediately you notice that it looks far more convincing, like, like just as is. 
Now I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit as well. Okay, so what this is doing is matching the sky to kind of the overall brightness of the image. And I can also match the color temperature. So I might choose just a slightly more warm color temperature to get a little more warmth there. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Edit Mask. I'm gonna go Brush First. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and uh, increase the size of my brush, okay? What I'm gonna do is select Erase. And right where that sun is, I'm just gonna, with that feathered edge, erase a tiny bit of the sky just to kind of let the sun sort of bleed through a little bit on that area, right? So this is step one. Step two now is to go back to our mask. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that that's applied. We're gonna go to Edit Mask. Now we're gonna go Graduated Mask. And what I'm gonna do is just drop it down from the top and sort of blend it along those mountains just a little bit more, okay? And then this is where I would make final tweaks. So this is where I'm gonna go and adjust my horizon blend. Okay, we're gonna go probably leave it actually right there. Let's see if we wanna bring the horizon up or down a little bit. Okay, I actually wanna bring it probably up just a little. Right about there is good. A tiny bit. There we go. Okay, we're gonna take that down to negative eight. That looks nice right there. We can see the mountains right there. And that looks really good. I like the way that this looks. It's very convincing. Um, so there's nothing else that I wanna do here. This is where I'll usually go back. And by the way, if you wanna augment the sky, there's all these crazy, cool, kind of fun things you can do. You can add like planes, birds, whatever you wanna do. So let's just play with this for a second and see. <laughs> Those birds look ridiculous. It looks like they're flying from a, a storm of birds. They're being attacked. Let's see here. Yeah, this looks very ominous given what they're doing and the fact that there's so many birds in the sky. So let's try, um, let's try these birds actually. And let's put the amount, let's fade the birds a little bit. So they're kind of, let's see if we can get that to look kind of right. We're adding a little warm, warmth to these birds. Let's see, let's go advanced settings. Let's pick something else. See if we can't find something fun to leave in our shot. So let's go balloon. What balloons? Well, that's kind of cool. I like the balloon. I don't think I want fireworks here. A moon, that would be interesting. Oh, that kind of looks cool. Very surreal looking. Let's see if we place this over here. Yeah, it looks a little bit too surreal. <laughs> Let's go do our balloon. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is Let's adjust the size of this thing. And let's see if we can't like place this up here. Just for fun, you know. <laughs> so my kids are totally gonna be like, Dad, there wasn't a balloon there. So I'm probably gonna end up taking this out, but I think it's fun to play with this and see what it would look like. So I'm gonna adjust my relight to kind of get this to sort of fit the vibe and tone of the scene. It actually does pretty good right at that default 20. Okay, and the mass refinement looks pretty good too. So it probably needs just a little bit of defocus to get a little bit out of focus. Yeah, we now have a balloon in our image. Let's undo that guy. Let's do something else. Let's do sun rays. What if we did sun rays? All right, that looks kind of cool. I do want this. Okay, so let's find a new center. So I'm gonna move this sun ray center to right where it should be, which is right here. And I love these AI based tools. It makes, it makes editing so much fun. And what I'm gonna do now is just kind of adjust the overall look to the sun flare. Okay, so I want the rays to extend all the way throughout the image. I want the penetration to be down just a little bit. That's a very aggressive word. And uh, number of sun rays. Let's make it, let's put it about here-ish. Okay, I want this to be a very subtle kind of setting or a subtle uh, kind of adjustment here. I'm gonna increase the radius just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back, add a little more glow, and a bit more warmth to this sun. Okay, and that looks good. Now, I can adjust this amount as much as I want. So at two, and then as I go up, it's gonna keep strengthening the overall effect, right? I like to keep stuff like this very, very subtle. So I'm gonna bring this back to like that kind of five to 10-ish number right here. 
Okay. I think this is super fun now. Look at how convincing the sky replacement, the sun, everything, how it's bleeding through. It looks absolutely awesome. This is usually where I like to go back to my light panel and just make any other tiny adjustments that I would like at this point. So I'm going to just bring the exposure up a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to bring in a little bit more contrast as well. All right. Now this is looking really good. Now I love the way that this looks. So all I'm going to do now is click this button right here so we can see a before and after of our image. And look at how crazy that is. I mean, the kids are crazy too, but I love the edit. And what I might even do is just move that sun flare a tiny bit up so it kind of matches exactly where the, uh, cause I, I didn't realize I kind of missed my mark on the, where it should be placed right here. It looks like it was right about there. That's perfect. So I'm done now. I'm gonna click done, save this out, and we're good to go. Hopefully you all enjoyed this tutorial. Let's check out the final before and after image one more time. If you guys enjoyed it, I'd love for you all to subscribe to the channel, leave comments below so we can show you guys how to use Luminar in different applications in different ways. I do my best to check out those comments, get ideas for future videos. And well, in the meantime, if you guys wanna see more, let me know. I'll create more tutorials. See you guys.